Hello, welcome to another uh, tutorial where I talk through the basics of uh, of family and your dynasty and stuff like that. So, when you uh, when you pick a character, for example, this is Lord Paramount Eddard Stark. You may uh, remember him better as Sean Bean, the guy who plays Eddard Stark in a television series by HBO. Now, when you uh, play uh, Crusader Kings 2, or even a mod such as the Game of Thrones mod, your dynasty is what matters. If your dynasty, which is your house, uh, runs out, say for example your heir was not a Stark, such as my heir is a Stark, your game would end once you died because your family would no longer be in charge. So family is very important. Not just having a family, but making sure that your family continues. So, for example, uh, Paramount Eddard here, he currently has a wife, which he requires to uh, produce a new heir. And he has his children. Now, your son here, Rob, he will require a wife of his own. But uh, for some point, which you will have to arrange, as long as you are alive, you need to arrange his marriage. Uh, that is, if he's in your court, if you give him a castle, he'll do his own things, but... You might live until you're about 80, and by the time uh, you become Rob, if you haven't got him in marriage, he would be like, um, what, 50? And he would have a slimmer chance of creating a child, so it's a good thing to get sorted soon. You can go through that through uh, arranging brothel, which would bring up uh, the screen here. You can select, you see his age is 6, so you select someone of uh, similar age. This is uh, a male, so it is anyone he marries, the children will be of his dynasty. You can see along this screen here, you have the uh, character portrait, of course, um, the name, uh, the Targaryen and the shield, that's their dynasty. So somebody of your own dynasty would have uh, your banner, that means they're another dynasty, and that there shows their uh, culture. So for example, your Northmen, um, that's a religion. You have to be within your religion group to uh, marry them, and I think this religion group is the Old Gods, the Faith of the Seven, and I'm not sure if there's another one here, if you just uh, select by religion, doesn't seem there is. So when you're picking someone, you can choose by age, you can pick an old 40 year old, you can uh, pick a 0 year old. You can also pick by stats, because um, the stats that the, they have contributes to the children they will make, so that's good, but it's good to consider the younger ones with all right stats compared to the older ones with already good stats because the younger ones will continue to develop their stats. You also have this here, that is the alliances it will make. So if you click by rank, it will uh, pick people with uh, high alliances, or it won't. But So if you go for it again, it automatically uh, shows, no it doesn't. What's happening here then? Oh, anyway, you see the alliances here. That will give you an alliance with Lord Stannis of the Stormlands. So if you click on her portrait, it will then show the man whose alliance you will be getting. You'll be getting his alliance. He is a Baratheon, so he'll be allied with that land there, which is important for the future of Rome. If you want to have a war, you need a, an alliance of some sort. Ah, here it is. It automatically comes up as most uh, higher families first. So, you see these green things here, the green traits such as quick and attractive, and uh, strong, if you go find strong, the umbers usually have strong, strong here, they, they can be passed on to your heirs genetically. So looking out for one of them traits is very, very useful, because um, if they're born with an attraction opinion of plus 30, it'll be very good for diplomacy, or if they're quick, it gives a nice load of stat bonuses. So, you can have a look here, you've got Brave, Family Person, and Paranoid. They do not affect the birth of your child and the traits they will gain. If, um, if you have that person tutor your child in a later date, that will affect the traits they get. But it's important for picking someone um, at first for a marriage that brings you an alliance and some of these green traits. Or, if you're older, um, we don't really have an older option, let's have a look at our court. Who have we got? Winton of Winterwood. He is unmarried. So, you see, he is unmarried without children. Say, for example, he was your brother. And he was 14. He needed children quick because you had no heirs. And you were 
you became celibate or something. Someone affected that you can't have children. Somebody did a did a Fionn Greyjoy on you, you can no longer make kids. And you, you had to rely on your brother to make children. You can go to uh, find characters here. You can search the realm for any, somebody of your religion group, because they have to be in your religion group to marry you. Um, somebody is a woman and not imprisoned, not married is very important. Now, if you're marrying them to someone who's unlanded, it's a lot easier to pick someone to marry you who is not a ruler and not part of a great house. These people are lowborns and they will almost always accept a marriage with somebody with a title, for example, Stark or of Winterwood here. So you can use this to find traits. So for example, you want to bring somebody who's strong. You search strong and there's nobody available. You can try again. Actually, you can do that on all. So you go strong, see if there's anybody, and there is. There is a uh, strong woman here of the age of 16, which is very good in breeding, for our breeding. There's also this lady here. She is strong and huge, which is very good. If you get someone huge and strong, that's uh, plus four to the marshal instantly from birth. She does, however, have the ugly trait. Now, these purple ones, um, they're not always passed on genetically. Like, you can have a dwarf, which is a purple one, such as Tyrion Lannister, or you can have, um, Ugly and Hunchback. They happen randomly. So, you can ignore that, that she's ugly, and you can go purely for these traits. So, if you select her, and you then go to Arrange Marriage, you can see if you can marry her to him. And you can. Now, that'll bring her over to your court. So, if that... If that lord there was your your brother, you now have a uh, a nice woman with him. Now this um, I may as well show you this. This is the uh, mechanic for when the realm is at war. Robert is our liege, but we don't have to join his war. So everybody gets a say. So they're all made independent kingdoms for the time being. And you decide to join him, which will affect your opinion with him, which at a hundred percent may not be necessary. Not concern yourself for now, which means you'll stay completely neutral, or you can break free, which would declare war on your liege to try and gain independence. We are Ed Stark, we will uh, defend our liege. So, we'll let this keep on rolling. Right, that marriage has been uh, agreed, so we now have this lady married to him, so she can try and work on giving him uh, heirs. Although, another one, which is very important to look out for, is the lustful trait. This one here, because that gives plus 20% fertility. So if you get someone with stats like this who is lustful, I recommend going after them because that is very important. Now, that's, that's uh, covered marrying to continue dynasty. You can also, if uh, you're in a tricky situation, say for example my heir, Rob Stark dies and Jon Snow dies, my heir will be a lady. Now this is Sansa, she'll then become my heir. If I arrange a marriage for her, to Edmure, for example, here, the chill children, um, under the terms of Metro Lunch, will be of the Mother's Dynasty. You would need to tick this to make sure that the children of your dynasty, to make sure the child of hers, when she becomes Lord and then her child after her becomes Lord, is a Stark, otherwise your game will be over. So if you tick that, he will not accept because he is a High Lord, because he's trying to avoid the same thing. So the best way to do it is you arrange betrothal and you do this button here, matrilineal marriage. I want to give you these options. It does, however, still have good um, alliances. You have alliance with Dawn. You have the alliances of the Westerlands. You can also uh, look for traits such as you got Sandor Clegane. He's got good stats, formidable fighter. He's strong. He's however ugly and scarred. Now you might want to pick somebody with a bit lower age for this one seeing as she is two years old. So if you went for Edric Storm, he is strong, which is a very good trait to involve, but he would not bring an alliance. Which is a shame. You keep going down, you might find somebody useful. If you get an alliance, you get an alliance with Lord Walder, the late lord here. So you'd get an alliance with uh, this land here if you married into that boy, which could be useful. Your child will also gets a claim on that land after he dies if he has a claim. Which, he might not. I'm not too sure. Look down here, there's not really anyone else much appealing. But I think Edric. 
We don't really need an alliance with anyone, and the Baratheons are our best friends. So if you arrange a matrilineal marriage to Edric Storm, who's under the command of Renly of the Stormlands for some reason, even though he is uh, Robert's son. So if you do that, yes. So you now have that marriage. So if Rob were to die and John to die, and she became your heir. Your game will now continue after their children because this sign here shows that um, the marriage is uh, matrilineal. So, there's that. You also get to educate your children. So, for example, Rob is currently educated by my kinswoman, who's a fellow uh, Stark, Sansa, who was the uh, um, daughter of our great grandfather, sibling to our grandfather. But. We don't really want that, do we? She's got good stats. Not that good, but we would rather educate our son ourselves. Uh, the reason I recommend that, to uh, educate your heir yourself, is because the AI do make some really silly decisions. So it's important for your heir, and maybe uh, your second choice. Uh, so for example, you've got John here, even though he is a bastard, I'll use him as an example. If you educate him yourself. can't because he's not six years old yet which I didn't check you can also use um, other people for example daughters because their stats won't affect you most likely you can use them for opinion so if I use uh, Rob for example here if I select him to be educated by my uh, vassal here Lord Roos of the Bolton lands over here the Dreadfort that will increase his opinion of me by 20 so that's when you have loads of younger kids and they're, they're never going to inherit, they're not going to be much use of you, it's, they're probably more useful to gain favour with your vassals. Because, as I've shown in an earlier thing, the opinion of your vassals increases the amount of troops they will lend to you in battle, which uh, favours you very much. Now, you also have the ambitions. You have the ambition, when you don't have a son, you have the ambition to make a son. When you don't have any daughters, you have the ambition to make daughters. This here will increase your fertility, because they'll be more trying to uh, produce children. So if you don't have many children and you need some, you should pick one of these uh, one of these ambitions. For example, we're going to go for five. We're going to try and make Bran. Now, there's that. That's uh, that's got covered. What have I covered? I've covered marriage, uh, dynasty continuing, and matrilineal, and education. So that's good. See now, uh, Jon Snow is available to be educated. That's because he has turned six. As soon as they're six, they need to be educated. So, go here, you can educate him. You can use him for opinion. See, uh, sort by rank, get all these lords and all their opinion. You can look, see if there's somebody with good stats. Maybe uh, a good fighting man, perhaps. Ah, yes, you've got Jorah, Lord of Bear Island here. He's got good fighting stats, good martial skill. You send him over to him, even though he's got 100% opinion. Imagine he had 80. Send him off there. Although, ah, this is a good one. He may change his religion because you're sending him to the guardianship of somebody with a foreign religion. So there you go. There's that. Send John over there. He is now, however being tutored by Jorah in Bear Island. Right, is Jorah... Right, okay, so we'll just replace Jorah for that for now. Let it tick for a day. Right, he's now being tutored by Jorah in Bear Island, because that's where he lives. Now, the reason that can be good is, say, for example, you're at war and you're losing. If they seize down your province whilst you're out leading battles and that, they can capture your children and execute them. So a trick I like to use is if I am losing a war and I have children being educated in my holding and it's about to be sieged, I will send them to be tutored by somebody far away, say for example this lord over here, or if I see them going over there you can quickly switch it to a lord over here as long as they're available. You can even, uh, even yourself, so uh, is that, no, so if we get Jorah to lead that there and we send Jorah over there. Let's have a look. And, oh, who would Amber? Yes, you do get options to accept people to your court. It does, however, cost you money. So you paid, you got him, 
He's got good martial stats. He's a good fighter. You can now make him your bodyguard, which is very useful. Ah, another Umber. Personal uh, award honorary title, bodyguard, and another Umber. I recognise that because I know the Umbers. So there we go. We have a bodyguard squad of Umbers. How about that? Now let's just let Jorah get over there. Whoops. Now see, Jorah is over here. He's no longer in Bear Island where John was originally being tutored. He's now being tutored in Deepwood Mott because... Even if, even though he's six years old, he still goes with the army if his tutor is in the army. So there's that. I think, I think that's enough for now. I've uh, covered marriages, why dynasty is important, and about educating children. I think that's, I think that's it for the. Uh, what should I call this one? Who well, you already know, you've watched it, but I'll think that in my own time. So thank you for watching this uh, tutorial. I hope it was useful. I was a bit limited on the things I could show, but I'm trying to keep it to a subject and episode. So thank you for watching. I hope it is useful for you, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.